fast to the perfection of your faith, and not a building in San Antonio is going to hold what the Lord is about to do. Satan wants to make sure you never get this word. Satan is scared of this word. He has problems with this word. Satan don't mind you going to a church. He has problems with you going to a word church. Stand up and be the person that God called you to be. Not a building in San Antonio is going to hold what the Lord is about to do. Jesus' name. Praise God. How y'all doing today? Yes. So am I. Same Lord, same faith, same results. If you got a Bible with you, I invite you to discern the 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And come on, let's dive back into this word that's all the way live. So that we can then be able to glorify God like God wants us to do. And that's live the life that God gave to me and you as he is. We're going to continue in the teaching that we started just a little while back. It's called his. What well, God is coming to his at this time and talking to his about being his at this time. So his can be able to stand up and live their life like they really are his at this time. God is coming to his at this time and talking to his about being his at this time. So that his can know what it really means to be his. And then step into the awesome, I say awesome, opportunity to live a life that can only be lived by his. God is coming to his at this time and talking about his. Talking to his about being his at this time. So his can be able to live a life that will cause other people to want to be his. Just like his are at this time. Because what they did was saw a life that could only be lived by his and they were able to realize, I'm not his. So that they can then be able to make a decision to go ahead and become his. So that they can spend eternity with the one that we do. What a privilege we have. Come on, let's learn what God has to say to me and you. Of course, we're going to read the foundational text. It's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We'll read that, do a brief review. Then we're going to move forward into today's stuff, which I'm telling you, it's going to bless you. If you got an ear to hear what the Lord's going to say to you, in Jesus' name. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, we'll begin reading at, 17, at, at, at verse 17. It reads like this. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new, and all things are of God, who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, but committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's us right there. We are the ones that's been made the righteousness of God in him. I'm talking about to the people that's born again. I got any folk up in here that's born again? Ha! Well, then we have been made the righteousness of God in him. Made that because we were not always that, because the word made means to become, which means we became that as a result of something that occurred. Well, what occurred? Him who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Him who went to the cross for me and you is talking about Jesus Christ, who went and paid sin's debt in full for me and you. He went to the cross to, uh, for us to be able to do more than us for us than just pay price, pay the sin of, 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 den, of, of, de of the debt of sin for us. Thank God he did it, praise God, because we sure couldn't pay it. We could not ante up for what we messed up, praise God. But yet, thank God for Jesus Christ. Anybody here glad about Jesus Christ? I know I am, praise God. Because he went to the cross for me and you, not just to pay sins debt in full for me and you, but also to be our propitiation too. We found out that the word propitiation means substitute, which means God went to the cross as our substitute so that he can then be able to not only pay for me and you what we was due, but yet at the same time also cause other substitutions to occur between him and me and you. For example, he went, upon, went to the cross and took upon our, our unrighteousness and gave us his righteousness. He took upon our separation with God. He gave us a reconnection back to God. He took upon our alienation with God and gave us opportunity to become a part of the family of God. He took upon our poverty. He gave us his wealth. He took upon our sickness. He gave us his health. He also took upon our old tied, jacked up, messed up life that we had before we met him so that we can be able to receive the new life that can only be received by those who receive it from him. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. We already know that that word life is the word zoe, which is speaking of the God kind of life, which means God wants us to live the kind of life that he wants us to be able to live, not the one that we did previously live. That's why he went to a sep cause a separation, uh, the separation that occurred as a result of what Adam did to no longer be a separation. But now we get a reconciliation back to Jesus Christ so that we can now do what he did. 
He said in verse 17, he said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That's talking about a person who has received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They've accepted the salvation gift that he gave them through Jesus Christ. Therefore, accepted the life that he gave them through Jesus Christ. We became a new creature once we accepted that life. Another way of phrasing, we were not the people that we were before. Because the moment you prayed that prayer of salvation, you changed right there to another person than you was before. We became a new creature. We found out that that word creature means creation, which means we, a new, we were already a person that was, in, that, that was created by God. But now we are different people who have been recreated by God to be restored back to the way that we were supposed to be. A people who would be able to live this life like God wants us to do victoriously. We are a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new, and all things are of God, who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We are now of God. The word of is talking about deriving our origin from, our strength and power from, but also deriving our, 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 our direction from in terms of how do we live our life from this point forward now that we are in Christ. Because before we were in Christ, we did what we wanted to. Now we're in Christ, we do what he says to me and you. That's why he didn't just come as a savior. He came as a Lord. A Lord is a person who calls the shots in the midst of our life. A Lord is a person that tells us how to live the life. And that, that's beneficial because if we're a new creature that we was never before, we don't know how to live now that we don't step through salvation's door. But that's what we learn from God and because we are now of God. We not only get our, our direction, we get our course correction from God, which means many of us was off course. I apologize. All of us were off course from the life that we were supposed to be living. But God, since we gave us the life that he wanted us to be living, now he starts teaching us how to live this life that he wants us to be living because we are now of God. Old things have passed away. That's everything that was tied to the old me and you, including all the old things that we used to do. And now all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself. That word reconciled, we find out, means change mutually which means God causes changes to be able to happen in our life after receiving Jesus Christ. He causes changes in our life. Has anybody ever received changes in your life as a result of receiving Jesus Christ? Because if you haven't, you ain't born again. Praise God. Because if you're born again, changes have already begun. But yet the changes have not stopped yet because changes are still going on. I said changes are still going on. That's why he said, if any, he, that's why he said, praise God, that he that began a good work in you is going to be faithful to perform it to the Jesus Christ. He just done started it. You got a lot more changes than it is that God wants to do with you. But each one of them is going to make you better and better and better so that you can be able to step into the new you. Old things have passed away and all things have become new and all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself. We found out figuratively that word reconcile means compounded differences, which means that means difference on top of difference on top of difference occurs in the midst of our life. We get better and better and then even more better in the midst of our life. More better, more better, more better. That's what we do. And we continue to move forward into more better of a life that God's got planned for me and you. But we got to understand the process of how that occurs. He explained it to us in verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. That word behold means to gaze at, stare at, look intently upon, focus upon. Eastside Detroit version say, check it out and don't miss this. Why is that? Because if you don't check this out like you're supposed to, you'll miss all the wonderful things that God has made available to you. If you don't check this out like you're supposed to, then you'll never understand who is the new you. And you'll continue to live that old tired, raggedy, jacked up life that Jesus Christ died to be able to get you away from so that you can step into the life that he has for you and come on run the race that he wants you to run. God wants you to understand who is the new you so that you can then understand who you are as the new you and come on, step up and live this life as the new you. Not act like you're the new you because you are the new you. This ain't no act. This is just what you're going to do. What you find out is after you've been born again, ha, you've been acting like you are the world rather than and being like Christ. God has already made you a Christian so that you can now live this thing out like you're supposed to. But in order for that to happen, you have to behold, gaze at, stare at, look at who is the new you so that you can understand, I ain't that person that I used to be so, ever since Jesus Christ went and hung himself on that tree. I'm a brand new me. Amen. Now, come on, let me live this thing out like it ought to be. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. You know, I had to find a place to make it rhyme. Praise God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I love the Lord. Anybody here love the Lord? Uh, we got something in common here. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we've been looking at the brand new you and me, at least one of the facets of who we are as this new creature. 
It's moot many, 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 many facets of who we are now that we're his. We're just doing one of them right now, and that's called his husbandry. Verse 9, it says, for we, for we are laborers together with God. Of course, the we that it was talking about there was Paul and Apollos and the other uh, people that was training and teaching the people at the church at Corinth. And then he began to start talking to them. We are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. We found out that the ye is you and me, that we are God's husbandry. We found out as God's husbandry, we are God's cultivable. We are God's farm. We are God's cultivable. We are God's farm. We are people who God purchased as farmland in order to be able to farm in our land what he wants every other man to be able to see what he did for you and me as a result of it. We are God's farmland. We are God's cultivable. We are a land capable of being cultivated, which means when God purchased you, he saw you as a land capable of being cultivated. He saw your possibilities. He saw what you could be. And so he purchased you just the way you were so that he can change you from being the way you were to the person that he wants you to be. He purchased you just the way you were. That's why the Bible says, for by grace you were saved through faith and that not of yourself. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You don't have to change nothing, alter nothing. You don't have to get nothing together. You don't have to straighten nothing out to be able to be straightened out later by God. All you had to do was just accept the Lord. God accepted you just like you were, but at the same time, he loved you too much to leave you like you were. Which means after he purchased you from the previous owner, then he had to get rid of the remnants from the previous owner. The previous owner was the devil. That old lying Satan who left all kind of stuff up in your land that was never supposed to be in God's woman and man. So therefore, God purchased the land just like it was, but began, commenced to, come on, let me speak Texas talk. He commenced to, he commenced to clearing all that up out of the land that was previously in that land. Come on now. All the old wine bottles, liquor bottles, broken, broken beer bottles, all the other cans too, all the other margaritas, uh, uh, glasses, and all that other stuff that we used to do. All the weed clips, roach clips, and stuff like that, too. Use condoms where we was laying with people we wasn't supposed to be laying with, doing things we ought not do. Just take a t just wait a minute. I'm going to get to yours. Just hold on. Praise God. You know, all the other stuff that was tied to the previous landowner that owned the land previously, God said, I want to clear that out of the land so I can now uh, sow into that land what I want to so that it can be able to produce what I want it to so that we can then be able to look at the field and be able to see the yield and be able to recognize that that came as a result of it being now God's. Whereas now we'll be, have a, a land that has amber waves of grain growing on it, where there's something that grows from us, comes from us, that causes other people to have life and other people to be able to have a stronger, more sustained and powerful life so that that can be able to be a benefit to somebody else. Because remember, when he purchased you, he didn't purchase you just for you. He purchased you so that you can do something for him that is in other people's view, so that people can be able to benefit from what grows from you as a result of that. Well, we started looking at some of that that God wants to be able to grow in the middle of our life. Turn to Galatians chapter 5. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm so glad for that life. I don't know about you. I'm so glad I'm saved. I do know what to do. Praise God. And that's to keep loving him, keep praising him, keep worshiping him, keep learning about him and doing what he want me to do. Live like I ought to. Galatians chapter 5, you know the way, the way he died for me to be able to do. Galatians chapter 5, we start looking at, praise God, what part of what it is is supposed to be coming from our lives. Where people should be able to look at our lives and be able to see that we are of God. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 says, but the fruit of the spirit is love. Stop for a second. The fruit of the Spirit is love. We found out already in 1 John, it says, Herein will they know that you're of me, that you love the brethren. Because if you love like you ought to, then that demonstrates you're really a part of Jesus Christ like you say you are. Because you're doing what it is that only the children of God can do. We found out that this love that it's talking about is a level full love. That this is agape love, an unconditional love. Which is the same love that God loved us with too which was an unconditional love, which means that he loved you despite your conditions. He loved you despite how you were living and what you were doing. Even though what we were living and what we were doing was the absolute opposite of everything that he's about, he still loved us just the same. But that don't mean he loved what we did. Please don't get it twisted and don't get it confused. Just because he loved you don't mean he loved what you do. Just because he loved you don't mean he loved everything you do. I got any parents in the house say, hey, Oh, this would be even better. You ain't got any parents of grown kids up in the house. Hey, hey. Now, you love your grown kids, don't you? 
but you don't like everything they do, do you? But you still love them. You don't change the lock on the door. You don't tell them to come back no more. Nothing like that. You keep on loving them anyway. Praise God. Hey, hey. Did it get quiet on that one? Change the locks back. Then change the locks back. Praise God. You don't supposed to change the locks on them and stuff like that. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. Praise God. You love them just, just the way they are. Somebody say there's a method to the madness. Bear with me if you don't know me. If you're visiting here, you don't know me. You don't know where I'm about to go. But if you already remember here, you, they, they used to it by now. Praise God. The reason why you want your love folk, folk like that because you can love the hell out of them. You got to fight fire with fire. Is anybody up in here? Me up in here. You put out a fire with water. And the water is the word of God, and the, God, and the word of God is love because God is love. And the only way you can put that fire out in their life is to continue to love them. Love them like you're supposed to. Does that make sense up in here? Like you ought to. He loved me and you. We ain't the same people we used to be. So if it worked on us, it'll work on them too. God just wants to use you as a vehicle to be able to share his love and cause his love to be able to flow from you. Because out of your belly is supposed to flow rivers of living water that springs up on the life under everlasting. It'll put out the fire of their old desire and then it'll replace it with a brand new fire. The one that God wants to do so that he can be, have them fired up to live like they ought to do. We get to love some folk. We love God with all our heart and all our soul, and we love our neighbor as ourselves. And because we love like that, it's an also another manifestation that comes right after that, and that is joy. That's the one we've been working on, because it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. The very first manifestation that comes after love is joy, which means when you love God like you get to and love people like you ought to, you're going to have a life that's filled with joy like it's supposed to be. That's what God did for you. Kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That now that we're a part of God, they're also not only supposed to see love flowing from me and you, which clearly recognizes the fact that we are of God, because we are the only one can do level four. Nobody else can do it. Apart from him, no, we can't do it. But we also have a joy that the world don't have, too. This joy we have, the world didn't give it to us. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Because it's coming from that same unconditional love, so therefore it's an unconditional joy. Which means regardless of the conditions, we still have joy. That's what separates us from the rest of the world. Because their joy is really happiness, faking like it's joy. Their joy, good to see you, sis. Their joy is happiness, faking like it's joy. It's masquerading as it's joy, but it's really happiness. How do I know that? Because it's based on happenings, that as long as the happenings are going the way they want to, then they appear to have joy because they're happy. But when the things ain't happening like they want to, they lose their happiness and therefore walk around all sad rather than glad like me and you. Now, we the only people that regardless of what's happening, we can still live in joy. That regardless of what's going on, we can still live our lives in joy. Why? Because our joy is not based upon what the world done did. The, 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 our joy is based upon what God done did. We found, oh, that done did is past participle, continuous present tense, ghetto. Praise God. Hey, man, it's done did. He done did something for me and you that caused us to be able to walk around and enjoy all the days of our life like we ought to. We found out joy is that deep satisfaction and sense of well-being that comes as a result of being a believer and, and, and a believer's personal relationship with God, that we have a deep satisfaction. We have a deep sense of well-being that comes as a result of it. In fact, I know, I know, I know to the world it don't make no sense. And to the carnal Christian it don't either. But to those of us who are in Christ, who understand what he did for me and you. And here we've already experienced the changes that he made in our life as a result of what he did for me and you. We have a deep satisfaction that understands that this, that this, this joy we got is unspeakable and full of glory. We are fired up about this kind of joy. And this joy also is our strength. Because we are stronger than the rest of the world because we carry this kind of joy. We're stronger. Whereas they buckle under pressure and then bow to pressure, we don't do that. We continue to love and continue to do what we do and walk around with joy all the days of our life like we are too. Last time we got together, we found out that because we're saved, we walk around with this kind of joy all the days of our life. That, that, that this joy is tied to our salvation. That because we saved, we got this kind of joy. Now you saved every day of your life. So therefore, you can have this joy every day of your life. Because remember, this joy comes the same way the love does because of our connection and openness to God. 
As long as we stay connected to God, open to God, then this joy is going to flow in me and you because it's actually his joy flowing into me and you, causing us to be so joyful every day of our life that the Bible describes it as a people who it's like their wedding day. That we found out last time that usually a person's wedding day is one of the most joyful days of their lives. Yes, it is. That's why you have to take pictures of it because later on down the line, now, you, now you're living out marriage, praise God, so you can look back at the pictures and see that it was a joyful day of your life. Usually the day of a wedding day is the most joyful day in your life. That's why one of the most important people at that wedding, you got the, the most important people are the bride and the groom, the man of God, who's going to be the one marrying you because that's the one representing God like it ought to so that they can be able to do the covenant like it ought to. The witnesses are important because, you know, if they do what they're supposed to do. The witnesses are important because they're supposed to not just be there wearing outfits that they ain't never going to wear no more, but they're supposed to be there forever to be able to support what it is that you agreed to do. So they can not take sides but always remind you, excuse me, when, they come to you, when you come to them complaining about what's going on at the crib, they're supposed to remind you that's your covenant partner. And they're supposed to support the marriage and make sure that the marriage stays together. That's, that's your backup. But the next most important person in the midst of the ceremony is the person that take the pictures. Because they the one document your joy. <laughs> Praise God. So you can be looking at it later on down the line when you're like, I can't stand them. Look back at that picture when you was all grinning at them. Praise God. And say, dang, I did say I do. <laughs> Guess I got to do what I said I was going to do. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Let's just move on. You're supposed to be happy on that day. Well, they get a chance to be happy because of the clothes they wear, the ornaments that they put on, you know, stank sweet they put on. Everything's all wonderful for them on that day, but ours don't end on that day because we still have some new shoes. We got our feet shared with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We still got new clothes on. We got the garment of salvation. Praise God in the robe of righteousness. We still wear our ornamentation. We still got our ring. Praise God. Because when we got married, when we got hooked up with God, God put a ring on it. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we got the signet ring where we can be able to, in the name of Jesus, be able to go transact business in the name of the Lord. So we still fired up about that. I got anybody in here that's still fired up about that. And that wedding party that ends with them don't end with us because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. Come on up in here. Ours just keeps on going on. That's what we do. Praise God. So just like the children of Israel, when they were brought out with, with, with joy, we get a chance to do it too. Because they came out with joy, we get to do the same thing too. And we're filled with joy. All the days of our life, we're filled with joy. We're filled with joy all day because we're in the family of God and because he knows our name. Our name is written in the book. And that's what we're excited about because that guaranteed us a spot up in heaven for eternity. That's why we're so joyful. We rejoice because of the fact that we're in Christ, and we do that every day of our lives. Our being a believer uh, affords us the ability to be filled with so much joy that it causes other people to be able to say, I, I ain't never seen nothing like that before. And they'll say, what's up with you? And you'll say, well, I'm Christian. And they say, well, I done met other Christians that don't have this kind of joy. I say, but you ain't met this kind of trick, Christian. I'm the bona fide Clyde. I ain't no fake. I'm the real chocolate cake. I'm plugged in, locked in, opened up to the living God, and I'm letting his love flow through me. And I'm just walking around being totally in glee. I'm his. Somebody say, I'm his. I'm his. Now, one of the, another one of the reasons why we are people who are so joyful is because we stay in God's word. I said another one of the reasons why we are so joyful and stay so joyful is because we stay in God's word. We stay joyful because we stay word-filled. So when you stay word-filled, word you can stay joy-filled. I'll show it to you. Turn to John chapter 17, please. See, another one of the reasons why we stay so joyful is because we stay in God's word. And because we are people who stay in God's word, we stay full of joy. Once again, God's distinguishing us from the rest of the world. He's distinguishing his from the rest of the world. We are people that stay in the word. And because we are people that stay in the word, then we're filled with joy. John chapter 17, let's begin reading at verse 12. Of course, you would see Jesus is speaking. Letters in red is what Jesus says. So you know it ain't no lie. You know he know what he's talking about. Let's read verse 12. 
while I was with them in the world, this is Jesus speaking unto the Father, the real Lord's Prayer. He said, while I was with them in the, in the world, I kept them in thy name, those that thou gavest me. I have kept, and none of them is lost. Well, you know, except for the son of perdition, that the script, spirit, scriptures might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee. And these things I speak in the word. Now, remember, he spoke the word of his father. He spoke the word of God. He said, these things I speak in the world that, reason why, here's why I'm doing it, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. The reason why he said I speak the word in the world is so that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Now, I like that word might right there. The word might right there is speaking of an opportunity, letting us know that it can happen. Well, what can stop it to happen from happening? Notice what he said. I speak my word into the world so that they might have joy. The distinction between the one that have the joy and the ones that don't have the joy is the ones that receive the word that he speaks into the world. The ones that receive the word that he speaks into the world. Because the word that he speaks is what's going to manifest the joy in the midst of our life. The word that he speaks is what's going to manifest the joy in the midst of our lives. That's why I thank God for a powerful uh, uh, worship team. My God, we are blessed people. Praise God. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, we are blessed people. I thank God for the opportunity to be able to sing praises unto God and give him the glory that he's rightfully due and be able to worship the Lord like very few do. I thank God for that. But Jesus said, I'm going with what Jesus said. Jesus said, I speak my word into the world so that your joy may be full. Which means you can walk out without full joy by just singing and praising. You can walk out without full joy. You enjoyed it for the moment, but your joy ain't full. Because the only way it's full is through the word that's spoken. That's why we thank God for the word. That's why we never apologize for moving forward. Because their joy would then be full as a result of the word that's spoken. Because it would make it seem as though then less comes afterwards rather than more come after. Does anybody understand the word of God up in here? Praise God. He speaks the word so that the joy can be full. And that's what we get the privilege to do. We are people who hear the word on a regular basis. They receive the word on a regular basis. All three of us are people who hear the word on a regular basis and receive the word on a regular basis. Therein is our joy made full. Therein, which means that's the way that your joy is made full. Which means if you don't do it that way, your joy ain't going to be full. That's why the world can't be full of joy. Because they don't receive the word of God which fills them with joy. That's why the world can't, world can't be full of joy like me and you. Because they don't receive the word like me and you. We a person that are addicted to the word. We, we addicted. Come on up in here. Can't get enough? Of that funky stuff. Praise God. We, we addicted to the word. We want to receive as, <laughs> as much of it as we can. Y'all don't want to work with me up in here. See, God's joy is presented to us every time God's word is presented to us. God's joy is presented to us every time the word of God is presented to us. Because that which the Lord speaks is to us, is what provides us the opportunity to have his joy fulfilled in us. He didn't just say joy. He said his joy fulfilled in us, which means the same joy that Jesus had is the same joy that we get because we operate off of the same word that he operated off of too. Because he said, I kept them in your word. That's why they're supposed to be so full of joy. Whereas the joy that we have, we had, excuse me, the joy that he had, we can have. That's how cold. Because scripturally speaking, there was nobody that walked with the strength that Jesus did. Nobody walked as powerful as Jesus did. But one of the reasons why is nobody received the word like he did. Pharisees didn't know it, not like he did. Sadducees didn't know it, not like he did. Scribes, Essenes, Herodians, mm -mm, not like he did. He was in a class all by himself because he was a person that received the word regularly. Operated in the word continually. And as a result of that, walked in joy all the time. We get that same privilege too. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm so glad we do. Yeah. 